In the last few years, the United Arab Emirates, an authoritarian monarchy in the Persian Gulf, has flagrantly violated some of the most basic human rights. Emirati citizens have been arbitrarily detained, tortured, and subjected to enforced disappearances, allegedly for their political beliefs and opinions. Others have been wrongfully imprisoned for exercising their fundamental right to free speech and expression. Non-citizens are also subject to rampant abuse. Today, I'm going to speak about the abuse levied against thousands of migrant workers in the UAE. Abuse committed by the Emirati government, but also by New York University, my alma mater. In 2013, I studied abroad at the Abu Dhabi branch of NYU. While abroad, I met some of the migrant construction workers who were building our new campus and witnessed some of this abuse levied against them. Abu Dhabi Saudi Island, the island where NYU's campus now stands, is being transformed into a luxurious cultural and international hub complete with satellite branches of the Guggenheim, Louvre, and British Museums. But the workers laboring to turn this $27 billion enterprise into reality are heavily indebted, underpaid, and mistreated. While abroad, I decided to research the work and living conditions for some of the micro-construction workers building our new campus. I printed out a Google map of a labor camp housing NYU workers and held a taxi. At the Aldor labor camp, I spoke to workers and a pharmacist who said that wages peak at $137 a month, which is roughly $4.56 4 a day. They told me workers can be punished if they fail to complete projects on time, and that salaries are cut if medical care is sought more than twice a month. The pharmacist also told me that he has always treated workers suffering from pain and heat, who he said were oftentimes very, very weak. Stories about the ill treatment of migrant workers, like those I heard during my visit to the Aldar labor camp, are widespread in the UAE. Foreigners account for more than 88.5% of the population, and roughly 5 million migrant workers are employed in the country. These workers hail from South Asian countries like India, Nepal, and Bangladesh, and migrate to the UAE, oftentimes for better economic opportunities and to earn money for their families back home. But human rights groups like Human Rights Watch, journalists from the New York Times and The Guardian have documented their mistreatment for years. According to these reports, workers arrived to the UAE already heavily indebted they pay exorbitant recruitment fees to seek employment and are rarely reimbursed when they arrive. Their work contracts are often substituted by their employers upon arrival, which forces them to perform work and receive salaries that are often the antithesis to what they were promised. All migrant workers are governed by the Kofala system of sponsorship-based employment, which tethers a migrant worker to his employer's visa and renders them extremely vulnerable to abuse. Workers cannot change or leave jobs without their sponsor's permission, and employers routinely confiscate passports and withhold or simply fail to pay wages entirely to keep workers in check. Furthermore, there is no minimum wage in the UAE for micro-construction workers, and the right to strike is criminalized, despite it being a fundamental right entitled to all workers. If workers do strike, they are often deported as was the case with more than 200 NYU workers who were beaten, tasered, and summarily deported after they protested two years ago this month. The workers who built NYU's campus in the UAE were severely mistreated, like some of the stories that I heard. Earlier this year, an investigation revealed that of the 30,000 workers who built the NYU Abu Dhabi campus, roughly 10,000 were completely exempt from the wage and living protections the Emirati government and NYU had promised. 25,000 were estimated to have paid recruitment fees as high as $3,000, and not a single worker has been reimbursed. And more than 200 workers were summarily deported for exercising their fundamental right to strike. Human rights groups like Human Rights Watch, the UN's international labor organization, have forcefully condemned the UAE's labor practices which can create conditions that exact workers to endure conditions that are conducive to forced labor. 
Last year, the ILO launched a formal investigation into these unscrupulous labor practices. What troubled me the most about my visit to the Abu Dhabi labor camp was realizing that my university at the time, alongside the UAE government, was complicit in violating human and workers' rights. In light of the UAE's track record and the egregious human rights abuses that it commits, it is a hypocrisy for the UAE to sit on the UN's Human Rights Council. The UAE government and international entities like the NYU, the Guggenheim, the Louvre, and the British Museum depend on thousands of migrant construction workers to turn their construction and modernization projects into reality. Yet these actors simultaneously turn a blind eye and violate their human rights of those on whom they depend. Thank you.